Hi everyone, this is Kaveh Sertibi with Mason McDuffie Mortgage, and I'm excited to have with me today Mr. Dan Coyne from Doyle, Coyne & Freeman, a local family uh, attorney here in Danville. Uh, Dan and I have known each other for several years now, and actually we've become good friends and actually clients of each other's uh, throughout the last several years. Uh, Dan helped uh, my family and I set up our trust uh, when we uh, purchased our home and had our little daughter. Uh, although it took us about pushing four, about four years or so from the time we actually uh, got the paperwork from him until we uh, did all of the actual paperwork and gave it back to him. Not because it's a lot of paperwork, but um, obviously some of the questions that we answer on the trust is uh, pretty personal. And, you know, when you start talking about death and things like that, uh, you kind of try to push that off and don't want to do it. But Dan was pretty persistent, and we finally got that put in place, and he was uh, very helpful and instrumental in doing that. So thank you very much for your help during that. Of process. course. It's my pleasure. So Dan uh, graduated from uh, UC Davis, uh, undergrad, and then he got his law degree from Mc McGeorge. Yes. Yeah, McGeorge, uh, which is part of EOP. Uh, he's been with uh, his firm for 11 uh, years now? Yes, 11 years. Yeah. And uh, it's been great to getting to know him and kind of him helping uh, my family and I what we needed to get done, uh, getting our family uh, homes in a, in a trust. That, that was one of the questions that you and I had before, which was, you know, why do we need a trust and really sure. who needs a trust? Well, around here, anybody owning real estate will need a trust. And the easiest way to explain that is to explain what happens if we don't have a trust in place upon our death. Um, if we don't have a trust in place, we have to go through the probate process, which is the court supervised process of getting our assets down to our heirs. Um, it's extremely costly um, because the probate fees are a percentage of the assets and the mortgage is not included in that calculation. So if you have a, a million dollar house, even with an $800,000 mortgage, um, the attorney's fees for that probate would be $23,000. Um, the personal representative of the estate is entitled to a similar fee. So after adding in court costs as well, you're looking at about a $50,000 expenditure. So if I understood that correctly, you own a home that's valued at a million. You have a mortgage that's 800000 so your net on that is 200000 Correct. But the court is going to look at the value of your home on that? We look at the gross value on calculating the fees for a probate. And obviously that's not taking into consideration any other assets that you may have, uh, investment accounts for. Correct. Okay. So obviously that 50000 in the Danville area, East Bay area, is probably going to be... We substantially higher. Now, quite often the personal representative will be a family member and will waive their fee, but you're looking at hard costs between attorney's fees and court fees of pushing $30,000 quite often if you own a piece of real estate in the area. So based off of that, if, if you did have a trust, yeah. what's the process that you go through for that? Well, we can avoid the probate process by setting up a, a revocable trust and we retitle our assets into the name of the trust so that when we die, we don't own anything in our, our own name. And since we don't own anything, there's no estate to probate. Um, with all the assets in the trust, we avoid having to go through the probate process. Um, so we uh, opt out of the court supervised process. And there is some work to be done. It's called trust administration, um, but it's usually done, just done in like my office or another estate planning attorney's office. Um, we walk the surviving family members through really the retitling. Um, there's some statutory notices we have to give out, but it's substantially less than the probate uh, process. Um, the fees are substantially um, way less, maybe a quarter as much. Um, of course, there's always, you know, odd cases where it might be similar, but you know, generally it's a far cheaper and it's far quicker as well because you know the other aspect of the probate is it takes at least nine months to push these through in Contra Costa County right now and that's doing everything right and the trust administration process can be done far quicker as well. Uh, what is um, the process to get a trust set up? Um, well, the way I work is whatever's easiest for the client um, works for me. Um, quite often we'll meet um, and kind of get to know each other and get to know their family and, and their wishes and, and needs and what their assets are. Um, and then from there, I'll have a real simple questionnaire um, that they can complete. And once they return the questionnaire to me, I'll usually have a rough draft of all the documents to them within a week's time. 
Um, and then after you've had the chance to review them, we sit down together and go through every document. I'll usually bring my notebook into the conference room and we'll make any revisions um, and make sure everybody's comfortable with everything and answer any questions regarding the documents and usually sign at the second meeting. And then uh, the most important part, quite frankly, that the, where the ball gets dropped quite often is the funding of the trust. And we'll work with the clients to make sure not only that their house makes into the trust, but that their other accounts are retitled and their beneficiary designations are updated. So, so your home would go into the trust, um, all your assets that you have, checking, savings, uh, some of your retirement accounts would go in there as well? Yeah, it, it depends on really the family circumstances, um, but generally real estate will go into the trust, brokerage accounts will go into the trust, uh, savings accounts into the trust, but life insurance, uh, retirement accounts, they have beneficiary designations, so they will pass automatically by operation of law upon death pursuant to those beneficiary designations. But we'll help people update those um, for people like us with younger kids. Um, our spouses are our primary beneficiary, but our trust is a secondary beneficiary so that if something happens to us, everything will flow through the trust, including retirement, life insurance, so that the successor trustee will be able to manage those assets for our children's benefit. Now that we have a trust put together, um, you've moved your home into the trust, all your assets into the trust. What do you do then? I mean, what's, what's the management of the trust at that point? Yeah, you know, really um, negligible. Um, you continue to own and operate just like you did before you had your trust in place. Um, everything will be in the name of your trust, but there's no separate taxpayer ID number. There's no separate tax returns. Um, it's really just a total see-through, pass-through entity during our lifetime, so you will not notice. So I don't need to, on a monthly, quarterly, yearly basis, meet with you or do anything for the trust? Absolutely not. Um, we just need to make sure that all the accounts and real estate are properly titled. So if you go buy that vacation house or second property, you know, just check in with me and we'll make sure that we take title in the appropriate name. But no, absent that. Now with the, the home going into a trust, uh, some of the questions I've heard before uh, is, why can't I just take title differently, take it as joint tenants, for example, sure. versus doing this whole uh, trust, putting the trust together? Sure. We do see that from time to time. Um, either married couples will take title as joint tenants, thinking that they don't need to have a trust until the surviving spouse, um, until the first spouse has passed, and then the surviving spouse can create the trust. Um, or even worse, we'll have the surviving spouse put one of the kids on title with him or her and thinking that, well, upon the parent's death, the house will just pass by operation of law to the surviving joint tenant. Um, but there's a tax issue with that type of planning. And the issue is we get a step up in basis upon death, um, but if you're a joint tenant, you only own half of the property. So the parent who dies, their half of the property gets a step up in basis for capital gains taxes. But the child who doesn't die is in the surviving joint tenant, that child's half does not get a step up in basis. So there's an embedded capital gains tax there that will be due if we sell the house. So um, what we do is we make sure that the house is community property and then community property gets what we call double step up in basis. So when the first spouse dies, the entirety of the property is stepped up to fair market value and there's no capital gains. So not only do you protect yourself from probate in, in that case uh, when somebody doesn't have a trust, uh, but you also um, are getting the tax benefit as well. You are. You're making sure. That it's one of the great um, really gifts of being a community property state is the double step up in basis and people do bypass that from time to time by owning title as uh, joint tenants. It's a mistake. Um, now that is for obviously your primary home. Yes. You had mentioned vacation home or rental properties. Uh, does a trust own that? You, should you put those assets in a trust as well? Yeah, vacation house, um, if you're the only one using it, we usually just go ahead and retitle that into the name of the trust. If it's a vacation house that's rented out from time to time or a full-time rental property, our, our general recommendation is to form an LLC and we'll have the LLC own the rental real estate and then in turn the trust will own the LLC. 
Um, the reason we do that is the trust is a irrevocable trust, um, thus it doesn't have any creditor protection features. Uh, the LLC will, so we will have the rental properties in the LLC so that there's some creditor protection. If a tenant is injured in a rental property and they sue you, they really would be suing the LLC and you can only look to the LLC assets for recovery, so we insulate the balance of your assets from that type of lawsuit. So at that point they can't come after you personally, basically? Probably not, yes. The other question I had for you was regarding home financing. Um, when you come to finance your home, um, what does that mean for you, the trust? Um, right now, it's usually pretty easy. We just have to submit a certification of trust um, to the lender, and that's sufficient. Um, historically, well, I've been doing this 11 years. When I first started practicing, quite often we would have to take the house out of the trust and into our individual name. Uh, the lender saying that they don't want to lend to the trust. They're making the loan to you, so they want the house to be owned by you. Um, but we would just simply put the house back into the trust as soon as the refinance was completed. A um, little bit silly, so nowadays it's pretty rare that we have to do that. So we're able to just go through with the refinance with the property and the trust the vast majority of the time now. And, and because of that, because you're going from when you're doing like a refinance, uh, if you're going into that trust uh, at closing, does that have any effect on tax purposes like from the county? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, we're allowed to transfer real estate in or out of a revocable trust and it's excluded from any rate reappraisal for property tax purposes. So you're still, whatever your initial tax base was, you're keeping that? It will not be impacted during your life by transferring it in or out of a revocable trust. Okay. Well, I wanted to thank again our special guest, uh, Mr. Dan Quain, uh, joining us today. Uh, as I mentioned, Dan uh, is an attorney uh, locally here in Danville with uh, Doyle, Quain, and Freeman. Uh, if anybody wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Um, our phone number is 925-314-2335, or they can always visit our website, uh, familytrustandestates.com. Perfect. Well, again, thank you again for... Thank you for having me. ...for coming out and appreciate that, and we'll see you guys on the next one.